Hello, my name's Robert. Um, welcome to this presentation, Waking Up Your Bike for Spring. We're going to go over a few things about the basic maintenance that you need to do on your bicycle before you take it out riding this spring. Um, there's a repair kit that's available at all the libraries along the Rock Island Trail. Um, if you're watching this outside of the Peoria area, this may not mean much to you. Um, but there's a repair kit and a repair stand at all of the, the libraries along the Rock Island Trail. It's pretty neat, the stuff they have, and it's a great place to stop and visit libraries. Hopefully soon they'll be back open after this whole virus thing has settled down. So, first step, take your bike down from the safe place that it's been stored all winter long. I'm sure everybody found a, a nice place to put their bike away, um, all clean and lubricated so that it'll be ready to go this spring. Or dig your bikes out of wherever in the basement or garage they were tossed last fall. Um, this happens a lot. You, you know, trying to put things away for, for the winter and things just get left and not properly taken care of. So, this is a bike that, um, has a lot wrong with it. And take a look at it and see if you can see what's wrong with this bicycle, um, other than the fact that it's just old. <laughs> well, first of all, there's no reflectors. Um, that is so much of a big deal. Um, visibility on a bicycle is so important. A uh, bicycle is so small, it's so easy for drivers to miss them. Uh, our brain is programmed to look out for things that are a threat, and a little tiny bicycle is not a threat to someone driving a car. And they don't consciously think that, that's just the way their brain works. It's not somebody being evil and vile, running down cyclists. It's just the way brains are programmed. Reflectors are so important, and this bicycle has none. It also has lots of dirt and tons of corrosion on it. Yes, lots of dirt, lots of corrosion. These tires are terribly, terribly dry rotted. You can see these little cracks along here. That's no good. And as I push down on the tire, you can just see it starting to pull apart. There's every chance that this tire could come apart if it's inflated. So it's time to start taking things apart. This is a coaster brake bike. Um, I'm sure everybody remembers riding one of these things. Um, as an adult or, or way back when you were a kid, you turn the pedals backwards to brake the bicycle. Um, so first thing we need to do is disconnect this brake arm and then loosening up the bolts. Now as you can see, this nut on this axle is pretty rounded over. Um, could be a good idea to replace this nut. Now this is done from using an adjustable wrench to tighten this bolt. And what happens is people take an adjustable wrench and they put it on the fastener and they turn and then they take the wrench off and then they turn again and the wrench jaws come a little bit loose and then when they go to tighten it the wrench jaws are fairly loose and it slips like this and rounds off the fastener. Um, so much better to get the proper size open end wrench that's a fixed wrench or a socket set. Now if you're removing the chain uh, for degreasing cleaning purposes you need to find the master link. The master link it simply will be the one link of the chain that looks different and there are so many different styles of master links that I am not going to get into explaining each and every different one. Some have a little pin that goes around the master link, a little clip, I should say, that you have to pry off, and then the master link just kind of falls out, basically. This is a pressed together master link, so I need um, a kind of a special tool to remove it. Now this tool is very handy for pressing out these pins in a master link, and you can also use this to uh, take apart a chain that has no master link, no discernible master link, all the links look exactly the same, just by pushing out any any pin in any link. 
And this handy dandy tool is available at my local library because my local library is one of those along the Rock Island Trail. Lots of other libraries throughout the country are starting to do this, a bike to libraries program or just having the tools available um, in general. Okay, further taking apart the bike, uh, you're going to notice this on whatever bike you're working on. The fasteners on the left hand side um, with the pedals and the cranks are left handed threads. Now, what this means, if you've ever done any mechanical work, uh, you know that right is tight and left is loose. Unless, of course, those threads are left handed. If they're left handed, they're just the opposite of that. And it's left to tighten and right to loosen. Um, so, and that's because it, there's a, every possibility that, you know, as this thing is having torque applied to it while you're riding it, if they were standard right hand threads, there's every uh, possibility that eventually they would come loose just during normal operation of the bicycle. These are the crank bearings from this bicycle. They were so gummed up um, and the grease had just turned to this sticky, nasty goo. Um, the bearings are actually in, in pretty good shape. There, there's some corrosion on the, the races, uh, which is the part that the, the bearings ride on. But in general, these are really not in that bad of shape. They just need this gooky, sticky grease cleaned off of them. Okay, removing the handlebars and neck. Now, this is something that I've seen trip uh, a lot of people up. Um, no matter what kind of bike you're working on, the, the handlebars and neck are going to be held on by some type of bolt like this. And it can get a little bit confusing. So let me show you how this works. Okay, you loosen the neck bolt. It doesn't need to be loosened a whole lot. You can see I've got this one loosened maybe three-eighths of an inch. And that's all it needs. And then the next step is give it a little tap with a hammer. And now it's loose. You can see how the neck has dropped down into the fork tube. That lets me know it's nice and loose. Now this is a stem expander bolt and pretty much every bicycle I've ever encountered the, the neck and handlebars are held on with some type of bolt like this. Uh, basically there's two wedge pieces. A wedge piece on the neck, it's cut in this wedge and then the, the nut is, is wedge shaped. And as you tighten it up, obviously these expand and grip on the, the edges of the fork tube. And even if you remove the, the, the long bolt completely, these wedges will still be stuck together and you won't be able to get the, the neck and handlebars out. These are the headset bearings. They were gummy and nasty, just like the crank set bearings. Now, your bike is probably not going to be in this bad of shape. This bicycle actually was abandoned at my local library. It sat there for at least a year. Um, rain, snow, it just sat out um, on the side of the library. And then um, I thought, hey, I can use this bike to demonstrate, you know, hey, how you can clean up a bike and get it going again. And I brought it home and I put it behind my house and then I forgot about it for a whole winter. So it spent at least two winters um, outside. So that's why this bike is in such terrible shape. It's also probably from the, the early 80s or late 70s. So it, it's old and it has been very, very neglected. So your bike's not going to be in this bad a shape in, unless, of course, you've left it out for several seasons in the weather. Um, these are the front axle bearings on this bike, and they were so full of sticky, gooey gunk that the wheel would barely turn. So the wheel bearings on this bicycle need to be removed and cleaned and re-greased. These are really easy bearings to work on. A lot of times on the, the axle bearings on your wheels, 
They have uh, loose bearings that don't have these nifty little cages that hold them in place. So the bearings could fall out and you have to be real careful with them. So if, if you're having problems with something like this and you're not sure, you can try it out, but you've got to be careful. Um, and if you lose these bearings, you're going to have to buy new ones. Um, it may be something that you just want to take to the bicycle shop. But these were super easy to work on, so I did it myself. Also cleaned out the hub in the, in the wheels. Okay, now it's time to remove these nasty old dry rotted tires that I showed you in an earlier slide. Now, if you're removing a tire, don't use a screwdriver. Um, these plastic tools, these I checked out from my local library. Uh, they were in a little tool kit. You do not want to use a screwdriver. Um, a screwdriver, it looks like it would work, but you could scratch the, the rim, and inevitably you are going to pinch the inner tube and put a whole new uh, hole in it that you're going to have to patch or replace. Now these wheels are steel wheels with chrome plating and they have all this surface rust on them. They look terrible. But if you look at this one in the front, this is before I cleaned it up and the one in the back is after. And all I used was quadruple zero steel wool. Um, not regular steel wool, not an SOS pad, quadruple zero. That's four zeros. If you use triple zero steel wool, you will scour the chrome and um, it, it'll ruin the chrome. It'll scratch it up, it'll dull the chrome, and um, it'll actually open up the pores of the um, chrome plating and make it rust super fast. So they sell quadruple zero steel wool at most hardware and home improvement centers. Um, it's really inexpensive, couple dollars for a package, and it's great stuff to have around for polishing all kinds of metal. Okay, um, these are the bearings and the bearing cups and races for the cranks and the headset, and they are all cleaned up now. So now I'm going to replace the bearing cups that I had removed from the frame. Um, they, these are not a tight press fit, especially on older bicycles. Uh, basically, you just take a screwdriver from the other side, um, tap them with a hammer, and they pop right out. But I don't want to hit this surface directly with a hammer, um, just because you can you can malform it fairly easily. So I'm taking a board and putting a board below and a board above and tapping them back into place. And it's just taps. It's not a very hard press fit for these these pieces. And reinstalling the headset bearings, greased them up uh, with a lot of just red bearing grease that I picked up a can of at the local hardware store. Nothing special, don't need any high-tech lithium super duper grease, just regular old axle grease from the hardware store. Same thing on the um, crank bearings, plain old red grease from the hardware store, that's all you need. Reinstalling the cranks and bearings. This is called a one-piece crank because the crank is one piece. A lot of more modern bikes have three-piece cranks. Um, you need a special tool to remove those. And that special tool is available in that toolkit at, that's available at the libraries. Oh, look, there's the little toolkit right there in the picture. Um, available from your, your local library along the Rock Island Trail. Once again, uh, now this is a new tire that I purchased to replace those dry rotted tires, but I'm, I'm reusing the old inner tubes. Um, and once again, don't use a screwdriver to pop this bead into place. Uh, anything that's not sharp will work better. Um, uh, I've used channel lock pliers. Um, anything that's rounded, um, plastic works best. Uh, anything like the handle of a, a, a spatula, as long as you don't break, you know, your wife or your mom's kitchen tools. But never use a screwdriver. You'll pinch the tube every time, trust me. And oh, to let you know, these tubes, um, I put them away last fall 
uh, and they still were holding air. They only needed about three PSI added to them. So these ancient tubes are still holding air very well. Um, I thought this was a clever safety device on the front end of this old bicycle. It's just a washer with a little clip on the end. And as the axle bolt is tightened up, it, uh, you know, it, the, the washer holds in there. Now, I'm sure we've all heard horror stories or actually seen kids with missing front teeth because the front wheel fell off of their bicycle. And I thought it was neat that this had actually two safety devices to hold the front wheel on. There's this little washer with its clip. And then the front fender, it also went around the axle bolt. So there's actually two separate devices in addition to the nut that um, hold the front wheel on. It was a clever design back in the 70s. Okay, here's the bike all put back together. But can anybody see what I forgot? I thought I was all done, but I... I anytime you're... Even a simple project like a bicycle, go over everything and see what you've forgotten. Because what I forgot was the chain guard. Forgot to put the chain guard back on. So here it is, completely back together. I bought these huge reflectors for the wheels. Um, reflectors front and back. The reflectors for the wheels, I bought these new at a bicycle shop. I think the set cost like $12. The front and back ones I bought from the Peoria Bicycle Co-op, and they were like a quarter a piece. Um, if you live in Peoria, um, Hopefully the, that co-op will be back open soon. Really nice guys. They're really helpful and really cheap parts there. So you're done putting your bicycle back together. Now go back and check every single fastener. Double check everything. There could be something you missed. Um, on occasion, there could be a, a nut or bolt on one side that when that's tightened up, it moves something on the other side of the bike. It, it, something moved around. Or, or the main thing is you could have missed something. But just basically, you're done. Okay, now double check every single nut and bolt on the bike and make sure everything is nice and snug and tightened up. Check your tire pressure. Um, the recommended tire pressure will be embossed on the side of every tire. It's, it's by law. If you look at any tire, the recommended pressure is going to be embossed on the side of the tire. Now, just here on the few bikes I have, I have tires that go everything from 30 PSI up to um, 100 PSI. So don't assume that you know what the pressure is if you haven't actually looked at the side of that tire. And um, use a tire gauge. Uh, the best thing to use, use is a hand pump with a gauge on it. But the, the recommended tire pressure will be embossed on the side of the tire. And also remember, if the recommended tire pressure is, it says maximum 50 PSI, that doesn't mean you have to put 50 PSI in it. That means that is the absolute most you should put in it. Um, you should probably be uh, knocking off at least 5 PSI under the maximum. Now these are the tools I would recommend you, you have available before you start working on your bike. Um, a socket set with metric and standard sockets. This little quarter inch drive is one of the handiest tools you'll have. It's any fastener on a bike, you will be able to get it tight enough with a quarter-inch drive uh, socket. Lots of people have asked me, well, what torque do you set these things to? It, 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 that's an impossible question to answer. There's too many different size fasteners, too many different materials, but a basic rule of thumb is just the old tight is tight. You bottom out the fastener, give it a quarter turn, see how it feels, maybe go half a turn past bottoming out that fastener, um, but if you think about it, little quarter inch drive socket, you're not going to need to get anything tighter than you can get it with a quarter inch drive socket. Um, set of standard open end wrenches and a set of metric open end wrenches. 
whether your bike is an old uh, American made bike like the green one I showed in these slides or if it's an import you're going to run into oddball size fasteners and you most likely will need standard and metric wrenches to work on your bicycle. Um, I also have an adjustable wrench here. Now I said earlier don't use an adjustable wrench but sometimes that's what you've got. There'll be a big fastener that you don't have a wrench for or maybe a little fastener that you don't have a wrench for. If you use a an adjustable wrench make sure it's a really high quality one where you can turn this thumb wheel with your thumb where it spins freely where it's got nice flat jaws and as you're using it use that thumb wheel to get it tight on the fastener turn put the wrench back on that fastener turn that thumb wheel again make sure it's tight each and every turn so you're not rounding off fasteners um, if you have something like an axle where you have to hold one side and turn the other side with a wrench hold with the adjustable and turn with the fixed wrench um, i've also got a ball peen hammer here um, great for knocking st stuck parts loose or tapping on that neck bolt like i was showing you earlier extra 10 millimeters if there's any mechanics out there watching um, you will giggle at this because every mechanic knows how frustrating it is to not have a 10 millimeter. Um, it seems to be the tool that goes missing the most, and it's the tool that every mechanic needs. Um, it, it's a small, small wrench. I mean, you can imagine 10 millimeter. So it's easy to misplace, and often somebody is saying, hey, can I borrow your 10 millimeter? And then they don't return it. So these tools go missing. 10 millimeter is actually the most common size fastener on the planet. Um, everything has a 10 millimeter on it somewhere, including Harley Davidson's. Um, I have a, a friend who's a lifelong Harley Davidson mechanic, and um, there's a component, I believe it's on the ignition, that takes a 10 millimeter wrench. So even Harley Davidson mechanics have to have a 10 millimeter wrench. The most common American or SAE standard size is 7 sixteenths. Screwdrivers. You're going to need a couple different size flat tip and Phillips head screwdrivers. Now, one of the most handy tools I found, I bought this at a local hardware store years and years ago. It's a quarter inch socket set that has an adapter to hold um, screwdriver bits. This is fantastic for hard to reach um, uh, Phillips and flathead screws. Um, you can put Allen head screws in here and it's great for getting stubborn stuck fasteners that need a screwdriver. Um, it's been a very handy tool to have. Now WD-40, this is a great product for cleaning scratchy pots on old guitars. Um, and actually, I, uh, a luthier recommended that I do this when I had an old guitar, and I said, yeah, I need to replace all the pots on it, and it was making noise. So if you have electric, electronic pots on an old guitar that are making noise, um, WD-40 works great for cleaning out the corrosion from those, but it is not a lubricant. It is not, it is not a good lubricant. This is what I used on this bicycle some 409 to clean surfaces. This gunk parts cleaner and degreaser. Um, liquid wrench chain and cable lubricant. Really good stuff. Um, there's many different brands of chain and, and cable lubricant and they, 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 they work much better than spraying WD-40 on your chain. Um, as far as a penetrating oil to get stuck fasteners loose or anything that's corroded, I highly recommend PB Blaster. It actually works a lot. It's, it's about the best working penetrating oil I've ever found. And also I just used regular old Carnuba um, car wax to wax all of the parts on this bicycle. And just a, a, a big box of shop rags. Now, like I said before, your bike's most likely not going to be in as sad a shape as this old bike was. But what are the minimums that you should do before you ride your bike for spring? You need to check for tire and brake wear. Um, 
whatever kind of brake pads you have, if it's a coaster brake like this bike, for the most part, coaster brakes either work or they don't, and repairing them is, is tricky. Um, and I'm not even going to get into that. If you have a coaster brake bike that the coaster brake isn't working, it, it's, it's difficult to fix. Um, brake pads on whether it's um, a center pull, side pull, disc brake, drum brake, there are pads in there that create friction and convert forward momentum into heat and stop your bike. If those pads are worn down, they need to be replaced. Um, check for loose or missing parts, corrosion, wheel trueness. Now, if you don't know what wheel trueness means, it's just how straight is the wheel. And basically, if you turn the bike upside down, set it on its handlebars and seat, and spin the wheels, and just look at the edge of the tire. And if you see wobbling, that wheel's out of true. Now, that is something you can fix yourself by tightening the spokes, but that's a completely different thing, and it's a little tricky. I personally haven't had a lot of luck doing it. Um... But you do want to make sure, especially if you have um, handbrakes, that your wheel is nice and true and, and not wobbly. And best thing to do that I would recommend, if you've got a wheel that wobbles back and forth, take it into a bike shop. And they have a truing stand there, and the guys can do it there in minutes. And, and then the last thing is cleanliness. Make sure the bike is nice and clean. Clean and wax all painted in chrome parts. Um, it's, it's really surprising how much a nice coat of wax can protect and preserve your, your paint and chrome. Keeping things clean and waxed, it'll, it'll make all the stuff last so much longer and look so much better for so much longer. Okay, lubricate chain and cables. The chain needs to be clean, free of debris, and well lubricated. The cables, they all should be lubricated. There's one exception to lubricating cables. Occasionally you will see uh, brake and shifter cables where the inner steel cable has a thin coat of plastic on it. And then that, that plastic coated steel cable goes inside the sheath. Now, if your inner steel cables are plastic coated, and I don't, unfortunately, I can't find a good photo to demonstrate this, but um, instead of metal, you'll feel plastic on those inner cables. You don't want to lubricate that because pretty much any kind of lubricant is going to be uh, petroleum based and can start to eat away at that plastic coating. Um, you could use a silicone, but it, it's, it just should really be unnecessary. And um, there's too much potential for even the silicone to make other debris stick and, and actually make the cables, those plastic coated cables, move less freely. Um, when in doubt, ask a, a, a guy at your bike shop. If, if, if you think your cables are plastic coated, um, they probably are because it's hard to miss. And um, mostly that's on like mid to lower um, price bikes I've seen it on. I um, haven't seen it on a lot of bikes, new bikes that I've looked at lately. Anyway, um, and then the last thing on this list here, check the tire pressure and make sure your tires are properly inflated, um, not overinflated, not underinflated. Okay, now this bicycle is much more like what you've probably got at home and it's much more like the condition you're going to find after the thing's just been sitting around. Uh, this bike looks great. Um, looks like you just hop on it and go. It's got all of its reflectors. Reflectors front wheel, back wheel, rear reflector, front reflector. All the reflectors on the pedals are there. But wait, let's take a closer look. There's a frayed cable on one of the brakes. And trust me, especially if you're wearing your bike shorts and you hit one of these, you're going to know it. Um, these little metal wires will poke right into your skin like a needle. So something needs to be done about this cable. It needs to be replaced or repaired. Um, also, believe it or not, cat hair is not a good chain lubricant. It does not work well. So these parts need to be taken care of. So with this bike, 
just took it outside and washed it. Regular old car washing soap. Washed the whole bike. Um, there were spider webs and dust and dirt on it. So washed the whole thing down. Um, even scrubbed the chain with just regular old soap and water. Um, that cable that was frayed, that cable wasn't actually in that bad a shape. It was just unraveled a bit. I was able to take this set of pliers and spin that cable back together. And then um, I didn't have any cable ferrules laying around the house. I, I normally should, but they're cheap. It's like a dollar for 20 of them or something. But I didn't have any lying around. So I grabbed a, a zinc fishing weight um, out of my tackle box and just crimped that on the end of it. Um, also, I used that gunk degreaser after I had washed and dried the bike. Degrease, lubricate that the derailleurs, chain, um, and cables. And then I checked the tire pressure on this bike. Now, whatever kind of bike you have, whether it's an old vintage coaster brake bike, um, whether it's an, uh, a retro bike like this red one in the back, a mountain bike, um, a cross-training bike like this blue one, or a high-tech recumbent, um, make sure you check all of the parts. Make sure every fastener is secure. Make sure everything is clean and well lubricated. And get out there and have fun with it. Well, thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a great day. And get out there and ride your bike and have fun.